Welcome back to Between the Lanes, How To and Information Part 2, Slot Car Boxes, Pitting, Prepping, Tools, etc. So now we've got our pit area laid out while we're at a race. Okay, so, so basically you're going to work on your car, you're going to tune it, you're going to adjust it, you might have to repair it, fix it, whatever, during the course of a race. So this is, a, this is how basically I would have my pit laid out at a race. Um, got my soldering iron. It's on, it's hot, it's ready to go. Got my solder. I've got my paste flux. I've got acid flux. Um, acid flux for chassis repairs. Paste flux for... Hopefully this never happens, but if you break a lead wire or something in the race and you have to resolder it, um, we've got extra braid combed out ready to go. We've got the braid brush. We've got extra body pins. Um, if you run body clips, you might want to have extra body clips out. We've got an extra guide flag that's threaded. Got the nut. Got spacers already on it. Um, got an extra motor in case we have to change motor during the race, which we hope we don't have to do, but sometimes that happens. Again, we've got our Side cuts, curved scissors in case we got a trim on the body. We got a straight scissors in case we got a trim on the body or trim on something. We got our hub straightener. We got our nut driver in case we got to work on that guide flag or something. Exacto knife. We got our pliers. A little box of spare parts. Of course, we have our lane stickers. And we've got our Allen wrenches. We've also got a set of spare tires ready to go on Allen wrenches. So basically, you know, you race your first tee of the race, heat's over, you bring your car over to your pit area, you've already taken your lane sticker off, and you're going to put the next lane that you're going to on, on the body. And that's really one of the first things you want to do. You want to get the old sticker off and get the new sticker on. And then you're going to turn the car over. The first thing you want to look at is the braid. Does the braid need replaced, or maybe it just needs to be combed? Usually, it'll just need to be combed, so we just kind of comb the tips a little bit. We just kind of look over the car, make sure nothing's loose, broken, bent. Um, make sure our gear mesh, still, still a little bit of lash, uh, lash, but not a whole lot. Make sure our motor's still soldered in. Make sure our screws, you know, make, make sure the motor's still in solid it's not loose it could either need a little solder maybe it needs a screw tighten depending if you're you know running a motor with a screwed in um, side slop and the rear axle you want to you basically you want to feel it but not see it and then you're going to oil your rear axle bushings put a small drop on the can bushing next to the pinion we don't really like oiling the oil light bushing in the end bell during a race because if you get a little too much on there it sucks in gets on the commutator it's going to affect your motor performance so usually just a light drop when you you're not in a big rush uh, at the beginning of the race it usually will last you the whole race on the end bell side um, and then once you're ready to go after you do that you put your braid juice on your braids just a little drop. You don't want it flopping, sliding all over, coming off the car. You just, you just barely want to kind of just wet them. So that's about all you need to put on there. And you go back, take the car back, put it on the track. You race your next heat. You come back after that heat. And let's just say, for example, um, you know, like I said again, first thing we're doing is we're changing that lane sticker now. Let's say you need to change your tires. Okay, so you've got an Allen wrench. So we're going to pop off this tire. And we're going to grab this one. And we're going to put this on like so. Then we'll take this set screw or this Allen wrench over to the other tire. Pull it off. Make sure you don't pull any spacers off. If you pull a spacer off, you can't find it. We've got extra spacers laying here. We can grab a spacer and put it on. Put this other tire on. Check that side slop. 
get it right, and we're ready to go back to the track and race the next heat. So that's kind of why we had our tires with extra Allen wrenches, because if you try and change two tires, for example, let's, let's just show you something here. I've got them ready on two Allen wrenches. So I take this like so, I take that off, I grab this. And this isn't going real smooth, but I come over here. And you should have these marked with a white dot or something. Take this one off, put this one on. We're good, we're ready to go. Now, let's do it with one Allen wrench. Okay, so we gotta take this off. Take this, find the set screw, and come over here and take this off, put this on, and as you can see, it's taking much longer to do with one set screw. So that's why we have our tires set up on extra wrenches speed that process along because usually in most races uh, you've only got two minute lane changes or maybe three minute lane changes you get into a national level and you get into the upper classes they they have four to five minute lane changes but you know for quicker uh, lane tire changes during lane changes the more allen wrenches you have the better off you are so a couple little tips for you on that now you know this braid. This has this has a race on it. This braid's not bad, as you can see. The tips are pretty pretty nice and gold color, and they don't need to be replaced. Now, this is a car that was raced last weekend, and you can see. I don't know how well this looks, but you can see these tips back here starting to get burnt. Okay, so usually. You want to you want to kind of brush that and if you can kind of brush brush most of the burn out you can just rejuice them and put them on but you can see this braid here is pretty well burned at the edge or the tip so that braid needs to be replaced so we would pull that out and put the, put a new braid in that we already have combed out ready to go and you're back on the track so there are some pitting tips for you and uh, setting your pit up prior to the race and uh, you should be hopefully you should be ready for any unexpected things that might come along and another thing is I've got my tape up here you can't see it but I've got my tape right here I've got a couple pieces cut to different widths I got them just sticking on the box you know they're up there ready to go so you know I have to do this cut trying to fix something in a hurry i can just go like that and i've got a piece of tape so just a couple more tips on being prepped and ready for the unexpected and when we come back we're going to show you how to put pinions on motors and put motors in cars and set the gear meshes all right now we're going to solder pinions on motors and soldering pinions on motors can be quite a challenge for not only beginners, but experienced racers as well. So, first thing you want to do, um, especially with new pinions, is you want to make sure they go on the shaft and like, as you can see this one, goes off and on real nice so we always check our pinions and that one went on real nice and tight or nice and loose too okay if you get one that's that, that wants to go on there kind of tighter it's almost like you got to pound it on or press it on then you that's what you need your mini reamers for and you would take a reamer and you would just lightly, well that's too small, but get the bigger one out. And you just go on there and 
just give it a few twists and check it. You don't want it to wobble on the shaft. You want it to, to, have, to have kind of a slip fit. Um, if it'd be too wobbly, you're going to have major gear mesh problems down the road. And, and usually the pinions you buy are usually pretty, pretty much uh, good out of the bag. And we'll go on the shafts. Uh, like I said, they'll just kind of slide on the shaft like that, and that's what you want them to do. So, first thing you got to do is you got to tin the shaft with solder, and you want your iron at full temperature. And we are at full temp. So, um, basically, well, the first thing you want to do before you even put flux on that shaft is you want to oil that bushing up real good. And that'll keep flux from getting in to the bushing shaft and possibly rusting and seizing the motor up. So we'll take our brush and we'll just put a little drop of flux on there. You always want to wipe the tip and get the tip as clean as you can. Put some solder on there. And then I just rotate that and you'll have to do this you're gonna to have to repeat the brush tin cycle three times usually is what works for me and we'll see if you can see that but we've got solder Tin, and you can see where, where the solder stops on the shaft where it didn't stick. And that's okay because you don't want, you want to keep that solder away from that bushing as well. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put some more flux on here. And we're going to stick this pinion on like so. Okay, and it'll just kind of sit there. You can't push it on because you've got a layer of solder. So again, we wipe that tip nice and clean. And we hold that on the end. And pretty soon, you're going to hear it sizzle. And you're going to see that, that solder start to liquefy. And when it liquefies, it gets hot. That's going to go down there. You don't want to touch it. You want to leave it cool. And then you can look at the end, and you can see you've got solder on the shaft and around the end of the pinion. So, so that is soldered to the shaft. Okay. And then, usually, it's a good thing now, and I'm not set up to do it, but normally I'd have my power supply hooked up, and I would run this. Uh, motor and then stop it after a few seconds and re-oil it and you can also again lighter fluid if you want you could squirt lighter fluid down there flush it out run it on a power supply real quick stop oil it run it back in just make sure you get oil in there keep that flux out of there so we're gonna take our second motor and again we're gonna well, I forgot. I gotta oil it up first. And then we're gonna wet that with solder, clean the tip of the iron, solder it up. Put more flux on there. Solder it on like so. Like I said, usually third time is the charm. And push that on there like so. And again, just hold that on there. And you don't know, I'm not pushing on, I'm just holding it up there and a little bit of pressure on there to keep it. Basically, I'm using that pinion as a heat sink, and it's heating that solder up on that shaft. 
and on we go. Now, sometimes if you get the pinion down a little further, and, and on this application, I want the end of the pinion to be flush with the end of the shaft. This is where our flat blade screwdriver comes in handy because I'm going to heat this back up. And I don't know if you've seen it or not, but I push that pinion, slid it over using that. So again, there we are. Got solder. Uh, soldered that shaft to the pinion. Now, I don't like the way that looks, so I'm going to come in, and this is where you got to be careful. You just want to put a little bit on there. And just a slight bit on there. And we're going to That should look better. Okay, so again, oil that back up. And I am going to be right back. Don't go anywhere. All right, so I'm back and I've went and got the power supply hooked up. So Hook the leads up and I'm just gonna run that. And that oil will run in and basically get rid of any acid flux that's flux that's in there. Now, because these are new motors and we haven't pretend the bus bars or solder lead wires too. On, on the most of my motors, I will take the leading, the front bus bar, if you will, in the front of the motor. I'll take my needle nose pliers, and I'll get a hold of it like so, and I'll give that a little curly Q twist. And what that does is it gives a nice place for the lead wire. To lay on and solder to. Personal preference deal, not necessary, but I thought I'd show that to you. So we got to prep the motor before we solder it in the chassis. So you want to just take a light little bit of flux. You don't want to get much because when a solder hits this, that's, that flux is going to going to kind of splatter just a little bit and you don't want that to get in, in the commutator of the motor because again that's going to affect motor performance if you get too much in there. And we pretend our bus bars where you can see how they're nice and shiny they haven't been soldered yet. So, I'm going to do this. Just didn't get enough solder on there. And come over here and do the second one. And the bus bars are now pre-tinned, ready for the lead wires. Now we need to pre-tin the motor, and this is where we're going to use acid flux. So we're going to come down to the bottom of the motor, and we're going to put some flux along this edge. This is if you're soldering motors in cars. In some chassis, you have to solder the motors and you cannot screw them in, so. Put a little more flux on there. 
to get this a little wetter with solder. But that's how you pre tin the motor before you solder it in. And then do the same thing on the second motor. And we've got that pretend. So, before we put them in the car, I'm going to show you how to prep braid. Um, basically, you take braid out of the bag, and they look like this. Uh, they're, you know, they're always bent at an angle. The edges of the tips can be kind of messed up. So, I don't know how well you'll see this, but most of what we're going to do is and get out our, well we already got them out, we're going to take our pliers, we're going to bend these over like so, so we've made them look like that, give them a little squeeze, not real hard, just, just light enough to flatten that out, and then what I'll do is I'll kind of pull like this, and then I kind of fan them like so, so I don't know. Let's see what this looks like. Well, there's one that hasn't been done. And this one has been done. Not focusing in. There we go. A little better. So, pull, pull and then kind of fan. Okay, once we got that done, we take our braid brush and I always go one, two, three, one, two, three, and make my braid look like that on the tips. Brushed, not brushed. I refanned it. One, two, three. One, two, three. And that's how we prep. Well, that's how I prep braid for racing, and that's how I recommend everybody else do it. But I'm sure some people may have a different type braid brush or a different way of doing it, but that's always worked for me. And then we're going to go ahead and just stick these in this car because the other car already has braid in it that I've already done. So another thing to look for is when you push the braid in, and this is pretty good because this is what I kind of wanted to show. That braid, you can see the, the bottom of the clip is flush with the edge of the guide where this one sticks up a little bit. Now I've tried pushing it in, and I can't get it. So I'm going to take, and I'm going to tap this. And now you can see it's down in there. If that sticks out and you bend this over and you get in a crash, that can actually cut that braid, shear that braid off where that brass is sticking out the back side of the guide flag. So once I make sure my braid are down in there, I bend them over like this with my thumb. I've got my finger here, my thumb here, and I give it a little pinch pull down so I'm basically I'm pushing it down and then I'm pushing the braid up and that gets your braid to sit nice and flat and then you can just kind of go like this but it's down up just a little bit and your braid sits down there nice and flat I don't know. If, I don't know. Let's let's try this. I got to get behind the camera and do this. Let's do this. Okay, thumb, and then up. I'm going up. I'm going like this, and that makes your braid sit nice and flat. 
because you want the braid to be down a little bit in the back but you want it up tight in the front all right now we are going to install the motor and we are going to try and get you a little closer okay and my hands gonna block some of this but okay we gotta get the lead wire kind of over out of the way get all these other tools out of my way now I've already pre-tinned my chassis and, and if you watch the between the lanes how-to video on setting a chassis up I showed how you, we pre-tinned that area and how we put the rear brace in and everything with the smaller diameter gear that you're going to run. So nice and flat on your tech block, put your motor in, you come in here and this is, I'm going to describe this, it's hard to see, but basically you want to be able to move, fill that gear have a little bit of slop between the teeth on the spur gear and the teeth on the pinion. So I don't know if you can see that, and I'll get it close to the camera here in a minute. But that's where I'm, that's that's my starting point. Okay. So now that I've got that, I'm going to come in here and put a little bit of paste flux. And I'm going to get a little bit of solder on my iron, and we're going to do this. Okay, now what you want to look for is you want to make sure that the back of the motor can is not hitting the axle. You want to see light in between that axle and that motor can. Now, let's see if you can see this. I don't know. Uh, maybe you, I see, I can feel, yeah, you can see that spur gear moving back and forth and the pinion's not moving. So that's that's what we call gear lash, okay? So we've got that there, we're gonna turn it, we're gonna feel it, we're gonna turn it. And what we're looking for is a tight or a high spot. Because if you have a tight or a high spot, then that's where you're gonna wanna reheat the motor and get lash or lash in that spot. And this, is really nice. I mean, all the way around, it's nice. There's no tightness. There's no looseness from one to the other. So, you've got really nice mesh. Now, <clears throat> big, big uh, important part here. If you can see the spur gear is riding in the center of the pinion, meaning you have um, well, hold on, let me see. I'm going to get my screwdriver. Whoa. You've got pinion sticking out past the spur on this side and teeth sticking past over here. That's where you want to be. And sometimes you want to push, because motors will have play in them, you want to push that that way. And make sure you got full engagement and push it back that way and make sure you got full engagement, which we do. Okay, so we've got perfect placement in the center. And that's what we want. Okay, so we've got that. Now we're going to solder the motor to the back motor brace. And we're going to put a, put a drop. A little bit of acid flux there. And we're going to fill in that gap. I should have showed you the gap. I'll do it in the next one. But we filled that gap in with solder. Now we need to come up here. And again, you might put a little bit of flux there. And we're going to fill this in with solder. 
and we let it cool. We don't blow on it. We let it cool. We never blow on a wet solder joint. That can cause cracking, and cracking will cause lead to breakage in the race. Now, we check it after we solder it in everywhere and make sure there's no tight spots. Okay, so now I feel a little bit of a, no, I mean, we're good. Now, if you have a tight spot after you've done that, what you can do is take a piece of lane sticker backing paper and I fold it in two and if you've got a tight spot, you find a tight spot, and you back off a couple of teeth, you put this in like so, and you roll this in like so. Okay, now we're going to come back, and we're going to reheat these two spots. We're going to heat this, let it cool, then we're going to heat this. Let it cool, and then we're going to roll the paper back out of there. Now, we're going to have more gear, more gear lash. So, I loosen it up. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not going to do this now, but I'm going to take this motor back out and reset this layer, because now I've got it too loose, because I had it perfect, and I didn't need to do that. But I just wanted to show you what to do if you got a high spot. So... We're a little on the loose side now, but we're going to come back. I'm going to come back off camera and do that. So we're going to do the same thing with the second motor. Let's pretend. And we're going to check. And we got it. Good starting spot again. Tack that in. Mm, that's nice. Again, I'm looking at my placement of my pinion to my spur. We're centered up. We'll push the shaft that way. Push the shaft that way. We've got pinion sticking out both sides. We are good to go. So now we're going to solder this to the back motor brace. And we 